All right, and welcome. So uh, today I'm going to dig in a little deeper into the neurology specialty specific uh, characteristics of um, uh, applicants who match or did not match. And this is a discussion about applicants from international medical graduates, IMGs, both US citizen and non-US citizen. Uh, and we will be looking at some of these characteristics. Uh, this, this video is part of a series of uh, multiple videos discussing characteristics of applicants in uh, NRMP or National Resident Matching Program uh, from 2022. And in uh, last two videos, I've already discussed some of the overall characteristics of MD seniors um, and IMGs. And in this video, I wanted to dig deeper. So starting again on that document, charting outcomes in the match uh, for international medical graduates. And let me jump to neurology. So neurology, uh, if you remember last time that there were um, um, pay about um, 1,000 seats available uh, and about 500 or plus were um, um, USMD seniors and then there's some DOs and the rest were IMGs who matched into neurology. Um, let's look at the summary data of those who matched in neurology uh, and um, both US and IMGs versus non-US citizen IMGs. And this data again is only applicants who gave consent to use their information and research. Um, as we recall from the last video, that about 16% or so from US IMGs, US citizen IMGs, and uh, about 20% or so from the non-US IMGs did not consent to allow the data to be used for this kind of uh, anonymous analysis. Um, so although there were about 187 or so matched and 187 or so unmatched out of 370 non-US IMGs, we are now down to 160 match of 146 unmatched uh, uh, applicants. Uh, and similarly, US IMGs was much higher number and we're down to 48 match and 44 unmatched. So the, the first question is how many programs someone has ranked who has matched compared to those who have not ranked? And the answer is a little above eight for those who have matched and that is true both for um, US citizens and non-US citizens. And as compared to someone who has not matched, typically they have ranked under three programs. Now this is of course an average and the range is broad and we will see uh, soon uh, more you know, uh, range by range or, or number by number. Uh, distinct specialties ranked. So the question is someone ranked more than neurology and they did not match in neurology. While neurology was their first choice, uh, in US IMGs, those who matched um, uh, are, have ranked um, about 1.4 programs on uh, specialities on average. So I would say that means uh, one in three probably have ranked as a second specialty. In, in unmatched, it's higher and it's uh, probably not a cause of their not matching, but maybe an impact of their lower um, um, resume uh, that they were weaker candidates and that's why they were uh, backing up with a second application. Uh, in non-US IMGs, again, it's 1.4 on average for those who matched and 1.6, only slightly higher for those who were unmatched. So still most were focused on neurology as their main um, target uh, specialty to match. The mean US family step one score for those who matched, if they were US citizens is 225 and 239 if they're non-US citizens. Remember in the summary, when we discussed earlier in the last video, uh, the summary analysis was that being a US citizen uh, had an impact on a higher chances of matching. Um, and maybe that's just an indirect observation, but you can see it here in step one score, that the score of those who uh, matched in US, which uh, was US citizens have a lower step one score. And actually, if you look at the non-match, non-US IMGs, the average score is higher than those who matched and were US citizens uh, as IMGs. And the non a matched or unmatched US citizen IMGs have a much lower score of 211 in step one. So clearly uh, your chances of matching is higher with a lower score if you are a US citizen. In step two score, the pattern is again repeated, 235 for US citizens and 245 for non-US citizens IMGs. And again, if you are a non-US citizen IMG, your score 233 on average is about a score on average of those who matched as US citizens and that again shows uh, some um, uh, uh, you know, benefit of being used citizen on a lower score. Mean number of research experiences, as we have discussed previously, does not have a huge impact. 
So those who did not match actually had a higher number of research experiences as a US citizen. And again, it may be that they're trying to compensate for their lower score or other issues with their application and they are being more aggressive, but it does not seem to be helping a lot. Uh, and those who are matching or not matching on the non-US IMG side has about same research experience. Number of abstracts and presentation, again, much higher for those US citizens who did not match. This now is more closer to those non-US citizens who have matched. Uh, and you know it's a pretty high number still for those unmatched. So I would say, although there is a high number for those who are matching for non-US citizen, uh, the difference is not big from those who are not matching as non-US citizen. And again, I do not see this as a significant factor in your matching chances. Uh, work experiences, uh, there seems to be a lot of prior work experience in those matching or not matching. And again, those who are not matching seems to have more work experience. And that may be one of the thing that they are uh, more distant graduates from their school and they had had more years between their graduation and current application, uh, and that seems to be actually making their application weaker. Volunteer volunteer exp experiences no difference uh, in the non US IMGs. Slightly more in the US IMGs were matched. PhD degrees uh, again no significant difference, although there's slight difference that in non US citizens have a higher degree overall or higher chances of being. But these are small percentages. Only six percent of those who have matched. Uh, as non-US citizen IMGs have a PhD degree. So again, it's not a big factor. Most of the people who are matching don't have a PhD. Uh, percentage who have another graduate degree, again, 15.6% for those who match, which is lower than 20% who have not matched as non-US citizens. And again, 45% as US citizens who have not matched have a second degree. And again, that does not seem to have a big impact on the chances of matching. So really, what really defines here as matching is step one and two scores and maybe their citizenship status for a lower score and number of applications ranked, uh, which is you know definitely if you have ranked eight programs or more, your chance of success of matching is, is higher. But now let's split these numbers into more individual uh, subsections and look at them in some more details. So let's look at number of specialties ranked. As, I, as we noticed before, most of the people have only one specialty rank, both IMGs and, and non-IMGs, and there is, you know, not significant difference, but there is a difference that those who are only ranking neurology as a non-US IMG, they have a higher match success rate as compared to those who are ranking two. Uh, they have actually slightly lower chances of matching if they're ranking two, the unmatched ratio is higher. But again, I, you know, this will may not be a cause of their not matching. This may be uh, that they, they ranked it higher because they were worried about not matching. And that's why they were ranking another backup specialty uh, besides neurology. And again, as we have discussed in the previous videos, this data only looks at those who match in their first specialty. So those who have not matched these 79, well, they only had one specialty, but these 50 who had a backup specialty may very well have matched into their backup specialty or these 15 who had three specialties listed once or two others besides neurology. So it is possible these 50 and 15 have matched into something else besides neurology, but that data will not be captured in this data analysis. All right, now let's divide the ranking number of application rank you know, one by one by one. And this is very, very interesting question here because a lot of time someone asks us question that, okay, I've only ranked two programs or I've only interviewed from three program. What is my success of matching? So for the US citizen IMGs, if they have only listed one program, they are three times more likely to not match. So, but still there were eight applicants who matched, who consented for the data to be reviewed by the way, who had only one. So you could still match even with one ranked program on your program list. And again, there is slight uh, higher odds of not matching almost twice on two programs. It starts becoming more even odds of matching versus not matching at three program, and it becomes better odds of matching at four program, but there are two people still who are unmatched even all the way up to ranking seven programs. So there is no guarantee that you have ranked a lot of program that you will match, but on average, if you have ranked eight or so as previous data, then your chance of matching is very high. There is even someone who have ranked 13 programs and have not matched. 
and someone with 16 or more programs and still have not matched. So, you know, these two people, it may be that they have withdrawn or something else happened or you know, there's something going on that, that is not being captured by the data, but they're really odd people. And this is kind of a skew in the data that I will not worry about, but I will focus mostly here that somewhere around six to eight is where the transition happens. Balance of power happens that if you have ranked six or more programs or eight or more programs, that it's unlikely that you will you will not match. Um, but even with one program, you have about one in four chance of matching. And with two programs now, the odds are one in two. And then odds got even better after that uh, slightly. So I will not worry even if you have only ranked one or two programs. So these were the US citizens, what, you know, slightly better success rate at lower scores. What about the non-US citizen IMGs? And now the data looks a little more uh, concerning. So if you have only one program that you have ranked, then the chance of match is now uh, almost like one in five or one in four. So 19 versus 75. So that will be 20 versus 80, one in four or one in five if you take 100 as total uh, odds as compared to one in three for US citizens. And with two, the odd is still not one in two. It's more closer to almost one in three now, uh, which is equal to one program ranked by the US citizens. But at three, the odd is actually almost as good or better than US citizens. So if you have ranked three program, then your odd is better than uh, 1.5 to one or you know more than 50% uh, chance, more than 50% chance that you will match if you have ranked three program and the odds continue to get better. You know, at five, it's really good. And then from eight onwards, it is really, really good. And here, we do not see anybody above 11 who has not matched, who has given consent to the order data to be reviewed. So many people have not matched. Uh, quite a few did not consent for the data, but to look at, and that might be people here or, or bottom here, who knows. But there is only one here at 11 and one at 10 who have not matched, uh, and no, nobody above that. And but the odds are way better after three is is definitely more than fifty percent. And then you know as we mentioned before, right around seven or eight is where the odds are extremely in your favor that you will very very likely match uh, into a program. Let's look at the next graph, which is plotting this probability of matching that I was giving you uh, verbally into a into an odds ratio on a by the number of programs ranked. So if you're only ranking one and you are a U.S. citizen, uh, IMG, your odds are almost 25% or more. And for a non-U.S. citizen, the odds is 30% or more. And the odds are very close. So let's say 20, about one in three chance of matching at one program. It gets better. It hits about 90% chance of success at around eight or so. And then it really hits uh, close to 100%, I would say, about 13 or 14 programs. Let's say 14. So if you're ranked 14 or so, your odds are almost 100% that you will match. The probability of matching will be very, very high. And then the the, the difference, although between US and non-US citizens is seen in less than five programs, so at bottom range here, but once you go above five, then US and non-US citizens are matching at about the same success rate uh, in the number of programs ranked. So the difference that we see in the lower score chance of success of matching is really when the number of programs ranked is low. So if you have low scores and you, and you have low number of programs ranked, less than five, then being your citizen has some advantages. But if the number of programs ranked is above five, then there is no further advantage of being a US citizen on probability of matching. The next chart here, chart number three is uh, step one score and distribution of that. So now this is divided into uh, groups of 10. Uh, so 180 to 190, uh, there is one candidate who didn't match. 191 to 200, uh, a lot of candidates didn't match, but there were still three who matched. So these are US citizens. So in the, even with a very, very low score of less than 200, they are still matching. And of course the odds get better as the score gets higher at 200 to 210, the odd is better, almost one in two or one in three. And then it becomes one in two at about 211 to 220. And 225 is where the average was, where the odds are about equal and then scores above that becomes you know, more and more useful. There is someone with a step one score of 240 to 250 between two in 240s who has still not matched. So, you know, none of this is a guarantee, but the odds are in your favor. Now the non-US citizens, foreign graduates, uh, they are still matching at 191 to 200. 
So there's still three people and it's one in two. So actually better odd than the US citizens. But the odd is actually much more poor here, 201 to 210, so less than 210, much more likely to not match. Still odd is below 50% at scores of 210s. And now the odds become 50% at around score of 220s. Uh, but the most people had the score in 230s and the the, uh, the average group for this non-US citizen was 235 as compared to 225 uh, for them and then the odds. But there are still a lot of number of uh, applicants who are not matching with very high score. So score of 241 to 240s, 21 people didn't match. And 251 to 260, six people didn't match. And then there was someone with a score above, above 260, extremely high score, who did not match um, uh, despite having such a high score. But, you know, odds are in your favor and there has to be something other going on with that person. Now, the probability of matching again plotted on your score quartile, although it never reaches 100% for any of the group, there is clearly a separation between non-US citizens and US citizen, but you have to remember that the data for non-US, uh, for data for the US citizen was on lower data, but the definitely high probability at a lower scores and US citizens, the, there is a, almost a linear relationship that your odds of getting match becomes better and better the higher your score is, but you are still matching even at the score of 200 or so. So, you know, there is no reason to think that there's no chance of matching. Now the step two scores, if we divide them and you can see now the whole graph is, Shifted to the right, the scores are higher in general, and that's typical to have a higher score in step two. And now, if you have a score less than 210, if you're a US citizen, you're, still, you're not matching at all. Odds are almost 50% and score between in 210s. The score in 220 is definitely 50% of an R. And then the R keep on getting better, but even with a score of above 260, and a 250 score does not guarantee that you will match. For non-US citizens, again, the odds are poor below 210 and 220 of your score of matching. Odds improve above 220. And in 230s, they're still not 50%, but getting close. In 240s is where they're really beating the chance of success of not matching. And now they're more likely to match with a score of above 240. And then, but even with a score of more than 260 on step two, there are people who are not matching and 250s score still not matching. So there is not a guarantee. Now, it may be other factors, as I mentioned. One of the factors that comes to my mind will be type of programs, your competitors. So being compared against other people and other applicants, of, they have really high score. If all good people are applying to a great program, then of course your chance of not matching goes up because you know your competition ha also has high scores. The next chart looks at number of research projects. And again, you can see that the odds are well balanced at all level of experiences. So in US citizen, even if you have done no research, you are more likely to match than not match. And then odds mostly are equal or better of matching at any number of research. So there is you know, no significant impact of number of research on matching versus not matching. Same is true almost for non-US citizens. The only uh, standout thing is five or more projects you are more likely to have matched if you had more than five research projects as a non-US citizen uh, than not match. Uh, but there may be other factors in play and not I probably not the research here that is making or increasing your chances. But the bottom line is there is that even if you have no research at all and you are not a US citizen, you still have a good have a chance to match, although odds are slightly lower now compared to not matching. Number of abstracts and presentation, again, the same theme is repeating that it's at any number of experience level of experience or chance of matching or not matching is about equal. So there is no significant impact of the number of publications. So even with no publication, six have matched as a US citizen and 10 have matched as a, a non-US citizen IMG and about equal number have not matched. And it stays the same. Again, we see that five or more presentations are abstracts uh, for probably five or more different research projects. There is a slightly better chance of matching than not matching, but again, these stellar candidates may have other things going on for them, like their scores and things like that, and not necessarily impact of their research or publication. Number of work experiences, again, no significant impact, doesn't matter whether you have or doesn't have any work experience. Uh, number of volunteer experiences, again, not significant. It's, you know, the chance of matching or not matching is about the same or slightly better even if you have no volunteer experience or less volunteer experience, uh, they're not matching. Uh, and then other characteristics, PhD degrees, doesn't matter. Other graduate degrees, doesn't matter. Uh, the match, those who are matching have a slightly higher percentage 
with those graduate degrees, but I don't think it has a huge impact on the chance of matching uh, or not matching. So this was the data more specifically for neurology in terms of various factors of matching. And right, you know, I like this data because it has been really broken down into number by number level. So a lot of people come to us, so I have no research, I have only one research project, or I have no publication, or I have only one or two publication, and, and so on and so forth. I think the only difference we're seeing here is really the probability of matching is skewed based on your GSMLE step scores and number of programs ranked, but not much else based on this data has seems to have an impact of your chance of matching. Your odds are about the same uh, or slightly better than not matching uh, at any level of other experiences besides the scores and number of programs ranked. So hopefully you find this useful. We went through neurology, but of course, this data is publicly available at NRMB website. It is not my data. I'm just reviewing it and giving you my impression. And as I said, I'm focusing on neurology, but there is data on other subspecialties um, like OBGYN, neurological surgeries, autoimmune neurology, and so on and so forth. And you can download this from on the NRMP website and look at your specific specialty of interest, like family medicine or whatever. Uh, and, and maybe use the same kind of thoughts that I did uh, to look at that data.